So whenever we want to learn something or remember something long term, we should be using active recall and spaced repetition. We need to test ourselves repeatedly over a long period of time. One of the ways that people do this is through using flashcards, which is a really great way to test yourself when you're on the go or you have some extra time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Amon. I'm a student studying computer science and economics. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the differences between Quizlet and Anki, the two most powerful and popular flashcard applications. And we'll find out which one you should be using to learn any new information. Timestamps are in the description. Let's get to it. So I feel like at this point, pretty much everyone knows what paper flashcards are. You put the question on one side, answer on the other, look at the question and answer it. It's been around for decades, it's tried and true, it's simple, and everyone is familiar with it. The benefit of flashcards is that it has active recall baked in, meaning inherently you're supposed to look at the question and answer it. And when people don't use flashcards most of the time, they just end up rereading their notes, which isn't active recall or spaced repetition. Honestly, at this point, I think there's no reason why you shouldn't be using digital flashcards unless you don't have internet or a phone. And if you're watching this video, you probably have both. So honestly, digital flashcards are the way to go for pretty much everyone. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about paper flashcards. Just don't use them and go straight to digital ones. So now we get to the digital options and we're going to start with Quizlet because in my experience, Quizlet is by far the most ubiquitous and well-known piece of study technology out there. I can't think of a single person I know who hasn't heard of Quizlet or hasn't used Quizlet at some point. I think the first time I used Quizlet was in seventh grade and that was eight years ago. So I'm sure at this point, Quizlet is well dispersed through the elementary schools and even before that. Because everyone already uses Quizlet, I'm not gonna go into how to use it because it's just so easy to get into and pretty much everyone already has it under their belt. The benefits of Quizlet are pretty obvious it's so clean and nice and pretty much everyone just innately knows how to use it because it's so easy to start getting into there's not really anything you have to spend time trying to figure out by yourself because it's just so simple and so intuitive pretty much anyone who just opens it up can figure out how to use it pretty immediately there are many games tutorials support and an entire online community with hundreds of thousands of pre-made decks and pretty much every subject field you can think of. In high school, all of my Spanish teachers had integrated Quizlet into their teaching style and workflow. So I don't know if there was a single student in my Spanish classes who wasn't using Quizlet for every piece of homework and every test. Those are the benefits of Quizlet. It's so well known and it's the default option for most people. Most people watching this video have probably never even heard of or sought out any great alternatives in the digital flashcard game other than Quizlet. Why am I making this video if Quizlet is already so ubiquitous and well-known. Well, kind of by definition, the more people that use Quizlet, the more Quizlet has to cater to everyone. Over time, as more and more people use it, it just has to get less and less advanced because it has to be easy to use and accessible for everyone as their user base grows. All it can really do is help you put your physical flashcards online and it has a few games here and there with an online community. But in itself, it doesn't really bring anything groundbreaking to the memorization process. Quizlet pours all of the resources into two things, ease of use and aesthetics, because they want more and more people to use it, which is why its features kind of cut off at a certain level. I wanna give a disclaimer here, because if you're in high school watching this video and your entire school is already on Quizlet, you don't immediately need to jump ship. These recommendations are more for college students who want to up their studying game and remember things a lot faster and explore more powerful studying softwares. That brings us to Anki, the number one Quizlet alternative that is significantly more powerful and better than Quizlet. And in my opinion, everyone who is out of high school should at least give Anki a try to try its extraordinarily powerful studying features that extend and really help you over a long period of time. So Anki is another flashcard program, which has this built-in ultra-powerful spaced repetition algorithm. It adapts to the way that you interact with it and makes learning significantly faster and easier. Basically, every time you do a flashcard or answer a question, it will ask you whether you found the question easy, medium, or hard. Over time, it'll use this complex software to mold the algorithm and decide exactly when it's going to ask you the same question again. The more you use Anki, the more it adapts and shows you exactly the right questions at the right time. 
essentially because of its amazing algorithm. Whatever you put into Anki, and as long as you do Anki every day, there's pretty much a guarantee that you will remember that information no matter what it is. All you have to do is be consistent with studying Anki every day, and the rest takes care of itself entirely. That simple fact alone gets rid of almost all the stress that exams cause. If you knew 100% that you were going to fail, then you just accept it and move on, and vice versa. If you knew that in every case you were going to get 100% and pass, then why would you be scared of the test? Anki pretty much does this for you. As long as you are consistent with it and you upload high quality questions, you will remember whatever you put in and that's that. That alone takes a huge amount of stress off of you because you know to just trust the algorithm. So why Anki over Quizlet? Other than the algorithm, why should you give Anki a try over the common Quizlet? Well, first of all, Anki is open source. This means that it has the power of crowdsourcing and pretty much every add-on or feature you could want, Anki has. Quizlet is an open source, so all of the features that it has have been built by Quizlet themselves. Quizlet adds new features to their software because they want more people to sign up. The more people that sign up, the more ad revenue they get by people looking at ads on the platform. This means that all the new features they add have to bring more people to the platform and thus are very generic and bland because they have to fit as many people as possible. All the features are very cut and dry. I mean, it's very easy to learn how to use all of them, but they're very limiting and set. Anki has add-ons that are made by people like you and me. The people who make add-ons aren't making them so they can get ad revenue. They're making them because they have a specific problem that they want to solve themselves. This means that their very specific need is being fulfilled and whatever they code, they just put out into the world. You're going to find a library, very specific niche and powerful features that don't necessarily look very pretty or aren't very easy to use, but have these extensive powerful features that you can only find in an open source platform. And he's a lot more powerful because people create the features themselves and release them to the world. Even without the add-ons, Anki has so many more features by default. It has a ton of keyboard shortcuts and optimizations, and if you can just figure out how to use all of them well, you can make a deck in Anki in half the time that you can in Quizlet. I think of Quizlet as a cloud. It looks very nice, it's very fluffy and big, but there's not really anything there. Anki is more like a computer circuit board or something like that. It's kind of ugly and it's really difficult to use at first, but once you figure it out, it just unlocks this whole world of potential. Let's open up Anki and I'll show you exactly how to get into it and start using it. If you open up Anki for the first time, you should see something like this. You won't have the economics, first principles and vocabulary, but the rest of the interface should look similar. If you want to create a new deck, all you have to do is click the create deck button down here. Then it'll ask you what the name for the deck is. I'm just going to put down countries for this example. And then you click OK to create your deck. Now, as you can see over here, we have countries right there. If you click on countries like this, Notice how it says, congratulations, you've finished this deck. This is because there aren't any items in the deck, so you've technically finished it because there's nothing in there. You should create decks based on the subject area. So if you're taking a bunch of economics classes, it would be advisable to create one economics deck because you can make sub decks for specific topics and subjects and semesters. Like over here, you see how I have an economics deck. Well, I also have a sub deck and a subsection for chapter one. So it's very hierarchical in the way that you can divide decks. If it's different subjects, I would definitely recommend creating multiple decks. So if you're studying French and chemistry, you should probably create different decks for that. Let's go through the process of adding a flashcard. I'll show you exactly how it works. So all you have to do to add a flashcard is click the add button up here. And when you do that, this window will show up. You can see how there is an input box for the front, back, and there's a bunch of other features that you can customize. Essentially, it's like any other flashcard app. So for the front, I could put down what's the capital of France. And on the back, I could put down Paris. That's basically it. I mean, that's how you create a flashcard. There are a ton more features like types of cards with many different options. You can create subsections of decks and sub decks like this and you can create tags to link multiple cards together. But essentially, the basic flashcard function is creating a new deck, adding a flashcard, and putting the front and back down. I encourage you computer science and tech people to dive into Anki and try to explore these complicated features because if you do a little bit of groundwork, you can actually program and create your own structures and interface features in Anki. Up here, you have different items for the formatting. So if I wanted to bold Paris, I could just highlight it and click bold, and then it would be bold. Wanted to italicize it, all I have to do is click italicize, underline, underline. It's pretty basic formatting there. When we're done customizing the flashcard, we click the add button down here. As soon as you see the card go blank, you know it's been added to the deck. Finally, if we click close, 
we notice that countries over here says one new. This is because we only have one flashcard in the deck that we just now added. So if we click study now like this, we can study this one card that we just inputted. So it says, what is the capital of France? Well, we all know it's Paris. I can click show answer right here and it tells me it's Paris. Now comes the beauty of Anki's spaced repetition algorithm. Down here, we have three possible options. We have again, good, and easy, and we can click any of those. Those three buttons are basically easy, medium, and hard, and you're letting the system know how hard or how difficult you found that card, so it knows exactly when to give it to you again. So we found that pretty easy, so we'll click easy. And now it says, congratulations, you finished the deck for now, and that's because we only had one card in the deck. If you click the browse button over here like this, it shows you all of the different decks that you have, and you can really take a bird's eye view and survey all of them and all of the different features that you've custom programmed into them. We have the stats button over here. Stats gives you a very good look and deep look into how you're doing and how the algorithm is grading you based on number of cards studied per day per week, per month, and gives you a lot of statistics based on how well you're doing. Finally, we have the sync button over here. If you click the sync button for the first time, it will prompt you to create an Anki account and that will sync all of your cards to the cloud. So if your computer dies, you don't lose all of them. So that was our brief tour of Anki. Now let's talk about who should use Anki and what you should use it for. I would not recommend using Anki for any math or physics courses. Math is very abstract and understanding based, and there's not a lot of memorization that you can really do for math. I don't even know how you would make a flashcard set for a math class. It's just so understanding and application based. There's not really anything to memorize. It's the same with physics. It's very understanding oriented. And the way you practice math and physics is not through memorizing sets of information. You do you practice problems and you practice application, which flashcard apps as a whole aren't really good for. Flashcard apps are great for memorizing a bunch of facts and detailed information. So I would definitely recommend using Anki for all of your biology or anatomy or some of your chemistry courses. These courses require a ton of memorization of vast quantities of knowledge and flashcard apps can really help with them, especially over a long period of time. If you're doing anything pre-med, I would highly recommend you get into Anki as soon as possible because you're you're going to have to memorize large swaths of information over your long university career and Anki spaced repetition algorithm spaced over years can really help you out with memorizing everything you need to know. If you can get into the Anki habit early on, it will serve you for years to come. Anki is really good for languages and history and other memorization based subjects as well. So who should use Anki and who should stick with Quizlet? Well, 90% of the time, if you're already in high school or under, you should probably stick with Quizlet. Most of your school is probably already on Quizlet and you're probably very familiar with its interface. In high school, you don't have to memorize large amounts of deep information, so you don't really need to distinguish between Quizlet or Anki, both would do the job just fine. If you're in college or later, I would highly recommend at least taking a look at Anki. It has a lot of really powerful features that you can take advantage of and it can really carry you throughout university. Now, I'm not saying that if you already have 100 sets on Quizlet and you use Quizlet every single day to immediately abandon all of that and jump to Anki. I'm just saying that you should at least give Anki a look. And if you're already not too invested in Quizlet, give Anki a try for at least a month or a few weeks to see if you like it. It really doesn't matter what specific tool you use all that much. It's much more important that you continue the really good habit of testing yourself and using flashcards. The best tool is the one you actually use. And if switching to Anki is going to make you abandon flashcards entirely, I would say don't do it. Anki has a bit of a learning curve. You can find a bunch of different YouTube tutorials and watch those to learn how to do it. But the best way to learn Anki is the way I did through Ali Abdal's Skillshare course on Anki. That course is very comprehensive. He goes through how to use Anki from the ground up and even goes as far to interview other students on specific ways that they use Anki to achieve success in all kinds of different fields. If you hit the link in the description, you can get two free months on Skillshare where you can watch any course you want along with Ali's course on Anki. I also have my own course on the fundamentals of C Sharp. So if you're interested in learning to code for the first time, that would be a really great place to start. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.